Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast, Senior Lecturer at IIT Delft Institute for Water Education. In this video, I'm going to show you how to automate the stream and catchment delineation procedure using the graphical modeler in QGIS. So we need to prepare some data before we get started. I need the DEM tiles and a bounding box for the study area. Here I have four DEM tiles from SRTM. And in the processing toolbox, I go to create model. And then I end up in this window with the processing modeler. And I give the tool a name and a group to which this tool will be added in the processing toolbox after we have saved it in the end. Then I'm going to define the inputs. And you can, of course, identify each raster layer uh, separately, but I use here the multiple input and I give the name, the DM tiles, and make it a raster type. So you can only open there a set of raster layers which are your DM tiles. Then we also need a vector layer, which is the bounding box defining your study area and choose for a geometry type polygon and then we click OK. Then we can add the algorithms. And first we're going to Mosaic. So I build a virtual raster and uh, these are the same tools as you find in the processing toolbox, but you can give them a different name. So I call it Mosaic DM tiles. We use uh, the DM tiles that were defined as a variable. Then we put the same things there as we would normally do. So uh, we don't want the layers to appear in uh, separate bands. Then the next algorithm is uh, warp to change the projection. So we project and we can clip also at the same time with this tool. So reproject and clip the DM. As an input layer, we use the output from Mosaic DM tiles. I define here the output projection, but I can also use that from the bounding box because that's the projection we're going to use. And I set a no data value. And the output spatial resolution, I set it to 30 meters, which is approximate for uh, the SRTM uh, one arc second product. I switch on the advanced parameters. And there um, I use the extent of the bounding box as the georeference units of the uh, extents of the output. And the next thing we can do is to uh, fill the no data. So fill the voids, they might be in your DEM. Maybe they are there, maybe not, but anyways, we, we cannot uh, differentiate there. So we'll do that anyway, that step. I increase the distance and uh, that's okay. You see it nicely adds these uh, functions and connects them to each other and to the input data. Then we have to fill the sinks and I'm going to use the Wang and Liu algorithm. Make sure we use the output from the voids and uh, we can uh, output here the filled DEM, not the other ones. If we define an output, that means and that it will be saved on your disk and uh, identified as an output file and it will be a green box in the scheme. I make that an output because we need it later. Then I want to uh, add another input variable, which is the Strahler order threshold, which you can determine before or you can calibrate it. Um, Strahler orders always have a minimum value of 1 and I put a maximum of 20 and a default of 8. Then I can add the channels and drainage network algorithm, use the output, the field DEM, and then refer to the Strahler order threshold input variable. And it will output all these uh, layers. But what I need as a real saved output are the streams. So this algorithm will output the field DEM and the streams. Then I would like to define a vector layer uh, with the outlet as an input 
and normally uh, yeah you can identify the point on the map but it needs to be snapped to the delineated channel so the streams file here so i'm going to use the snap geometries to layer and rename it snap pore point that's how it's called in some other software and as an input layer i use the outlet on map input and the reference layer the channels so it will snap to the channels and we can put there a tolerance but it's also nice to uh, make it uh, variable and i need that as an output it's the snapped outlet you can move these boxes and they still remain connected actually I don't want that as an output I want to identify the tolerance and make that a uh, variable and here you can define it in a meter so between one pixel of 30 meters and 5,000 meters will be okay And then I can edit this function and make it refer to the right input, which is the tolerance. And another thing I want is uh, the geometry, the X and Y coordinates. So I need to add another algorithm. And that is add geometry attributes. I do that because uh, in the next step we need the coordinates of the x and the y of the point to uh, delineate and the catchment belonging to that snapped outlet point. So I call this one save outlet with coordinates. The input layer is the snapped uh, geometry. And then we can define here the output layer. Call it snapped outlet. There it is. So three outputs for this algorithm, filled DEM, streams, and the snapped outlet. I'll save it. Give it a name. It goes to my profile by default. So I'm going to hide all layers because I want to identify now the outlet on the OpenStreetMap. So as an input, we need to define the outlet before we run the algorithm. So I want to delineate the Ruhr catchment, the same one as in the manual procedure. So I create a scratch layer with the point geometry in the correct projection, that's important. Click OK. And I add the point at the place where the Ruhr comes into the Meuse River. Save it. And then uh, I find the model under Models, Hydrology, Stream Delineation. I choose the bounding box. I choose the DEM tiles. The outlet, Strahler order, I increase the tolerance here because that's needed. And I leave the others open to have a temporary output. And then uh, it runs our model. It gave an error, but it's still computed. So I zoom to the area. And... Uh, because we didn't specify output names, it will just give some default names, but segments are our channels. And I can style it. There it is. And the field DM. Now I want to make a second model to delineate the catchment, because this one delineated the streams, but I need that as an input to delineate the uh, catchment. Let's have a look at the snapped uh, outlet. How that worked so it moved the outlet to the line 
So I'm going to create a new model. I call it catchment delineation. And I put it also under hydrology. And there I need a few uh, inputs. I need a raster layer. It's the filled DEM, of course, as an input. I need a number, which is the X coordinate. I don't put restrictions there because I want it to be a generic tool for any uh, projection that you want to use and any location. A field for the Y coordinate. And we use the upslope area tool to calculate the catchment. So I'm going to rename this to uh, delineate catchment. We take the x coordinate and the y coordinate from the variables that we defined, elevation, the field, the DEM, and we use here the default methods. And that then generates the delineated catchment. However, we don't want the raster, we also want the polygons, so I'm going to use the polygonize and rename it polygonize catchment. Make sure to choose the upslope area output. Keep the defaults. But remember that we have uh, two attributes in our attribute table of the polygonized catchment, where only value 100 is the catchment. So I'm going to use here extract by attribute. And I call it save catchment polygon only. And I type here the field name and it's their operators equal and then 100. So I only select value 100 from the DN field, which is the field uh, which we created pre previously. And then the output is the catchment boundary. So that will be then the result. I save the model. And I can now run the model. So run catchment delineation. I use the fill DEM. Now I can use the coordinates from the attribute table of the snapped outlet. Simply paste them here. And I leave that at default, run the algorithm, and there it ends up with uh, the catchment. If I click zoom to layer, you can now see that it delineated the whole uh, Ruhr catchment as a, as a polygon. And that's what we uh, wanted. So with two uh, added tools, we can do the whole procedure of uh, catchment delineation. And you can continue styling that in uh, if you want to make a nice map. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for updates. For more free materials on GIS, uh, please have a look at IG Delft Open Courseware at gisopencourseware.org.